So these are cool problems. Um, it's a whole genre of problems. This is the idea that we're going to relate impulse to a change in momentum. Okay? So when we go force times time, is mass change in velocity, right? You should understand this is impulse. And we're saying here that it's the same as a change in momentum. And that was our definition back on the impulse days. So this should shock you like not at all. But don't be freaked out because like in the top part is you got like F times delta T. And we don't really put the delta in there. So right. don't, don't worry about it so much, right? It's force times time. You know? We don't really We ignore that one because all our times are delta T's really. Yeah. But but I it's I think it's important to have delta v because you really got to know that one because if I give you two different velocities like five meters per second to three meters per second right the change would be negative two meters per second right right okay so you got to be careful about that and positive and negative matter a lot yep yeah so write this down. You might want to pause right now. We're not going to pause. We're going to go right on. But yeah, there it is. You should pause. Yeah. Oh, hey, that's gone now. Okay, so uh, a pitcher pitches that darn ball there. This is a fast pitch, right? I'm thinking maybe the batter can put a little more uh, moxie on it. So I said the batter can hit it back at 50 meters per second. Right? Yeah, he had something to prove. He did. Now, this is a positive velocity. Let's make that positive. Let's going make this one the plate. negative. Yeah, away from the plate. So if you got a positive 40, and then he turns around and cranks on that thing, and it's going back 50, isn't our change in velocity going to be not 10? Yeah, that's what everybody not doesn't 10. get, right? The change from positive 40 meters per second all the way to 50 negative meters per second. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> okay. A little bit far. That change is minus 90. 90 meters per second. So just look, That's these problems are so basic that we're going to try to trick you with stuff like that. Okay, so that is our delta V, and that was the hardest part of this problem. The rest of it's just force times time is mass, change in velocity. We already figured out our change in velocity, right, is minus 90 meters per second. Our mass is already in kilograms. If it wasn't, we put it in kilograms. And then let's see the time. Oh, there's our time. It's in seconds. It's got to be the time, right? And then it's just solve for the thing you don't know. Now, I don't want to embarrass you by asking which one of you know how to solve this and which one of you don't. But you've got to, what you do is you've got this times this divided by this, always. And Mr. Doug has already done that. He's so bored with me talking. What did you get there? I got 1,003.8. But it's but then, negative, though, isn't it? Yeah, negative. Yeah, negative. Newtons. But here's the thing. Look at the way Mr. Murray put the answer in the uh, little parentheses there. It's the same number, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but don't don't give us that E3. That's calculator language. And Mr. Duggan doesn't like that. Yeah. I like that. This is something we haven't, we haven't really come to words about this. You, know? you let him put it in no, capital No, I don't. I don't. But well, I, I'm they lazy could. sometimes. I'm lazy sometimes. Yeah, I get it. It's all good. So anyway, there, there we go. This is this is our answer, um, and the force was negative because it made the ball go in the negative direction. In the direction the opposite of the pitcher, which makes the batter happy, but the pitcher not so happy. Especially since this is going to hit the pitcher, since it's directly at the. Uh, yeah. I always feel sorry for the pitcher. That's the way it happens.